JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 18th. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, where, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the dollar traded mixed against the other G10 currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian morning Thursday. It underperformed versus NOC, SEC, JPY and CHF in that order, while it uh, recorded some gains against uh, the Euro, the Canadian dollar, the New Zealand dollar, the pound and the Aussie. Now the strengthening of the yen and the franc combined with the weakness in the risk-linked Aussie and Kiwi suggests that investors continued trading in a risk of fashion. Although most major EU indices closed in positive territory in the US, both the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500 ended, ended their session lower. Only Nasdaq closed slightly up, gaining only 0.15%. The subdued appetite rolled over into the Asian trading today as well. Despite uh, China-Shanghai composite trading virtually unchanged, Japan's uh, Nikkei 225 and Hong Kong's Hang Seng slid 0.44 and 0.60% respectively. It seems that uh, there is a battle between those who are optimistic over an economic recovery as lockdown measures continue to be lifted around uh, most of the world and those who are concerned over a second wave of uh, coronavirus infections after the new flare-up in China, as well as the surging cases in several U.S. Uh, states, including Oklahoma, where President Trump is planning a campaign rally on Saturday. As for the overall picture, although infections slowed somewhat yesterday, the daily number of new cases remains near its uh, record peak hit on Friday. As uh, for our view, as long as uh, most governments around the globe continue to ease their, their, their restrictive measures, we still see decent chances for the broader appetite to improve. That said, investors appear a bit more cautious than we, than we have initially anticipated and thus, until we get clear indications of, of uh, further recovery, we prefer to stay somewhat sidelined. Among currency pairs, one of the best gauges of uh, broader market sentiment is uh, Aussie N in our view. If indeed optimism returns, this pair may drift north. In order to start examining the bearish case, we would like to see more governments reintroducing restrictions, something that could result in a second hit to the global economy. Now, overnight, apart from the subdued market sentiment, the Aussie and the Kiwi felt the heat of uh, disappointing domestic data. Australia's employment numbers came in worse than expected, with the unemployment rate rising to 7.1% from 6.2%, and the net change in employment revealing that the economy has lost 227.7 thousand jobs instead of 125, as the forecast suggested. In New Zealand, GDP contracted 1.6% quarter over quarter at a time when the forecast was for a 1% slide, dragging the year over year rate into negative waters to minus 0.2% from plus 1.8%. As for today, the main event may be the Bank of England monetary policy decision. At their last meeting, uh, policymakers of this bank kept monetary policy unchanged. Via unanimous vote, they kept interest rates on hold, while with regards to the RQE program, the vote was 7 to 2 in favor of keeping the amount of purchases unchanged. The two dissenters, uh, Sanders and Haskell, preferred to increase the, the target of the stock of asset purchases by an additional 100 billion pounds. Now, with officials noting that the current QE is set to reach its target at the beginning of July, we see it uh, nearly certain that they will expand uh, their purchases at this gathering, 
perhaps by another 100 billion pounds as uh, the descenders suggested at the prior gathering. However, bearing in mind uh, that uh, such a decision may be largely expected, we don't expect it to shake the pound. We think that GBP traders will focus more on the language around interest rates. Remember that in the aftermath, in the aftermath of the prior gathering, Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey and Chief Economist Andy Haldane said that the bank is looking more urgently at negative interest rates. Thus, although they may not cut uh, rates at this gathering, it would be interesting to see how ready they are to do so in the months to come. If there is intense uh, talk with regards to the examination of negative interest rates, the pound is likely to come under selling interest, but the currency's traders may also keep an eye on developments and headlines surrounding Brexit. Today and tomorrow, an EU leaders' uh, summit is scheduled to take place and we will look for clues as to how far away the EU and the UK are in finding common ground. EU leaders are also expected to discuss the, pro the proposed coronavirus uh, recovery fund, most members support uh, the plan, but Netherlands, Austria, and Denmark and Sweden, uh, and Sweden are, are still skeptical. For the plan to take flesh, it must be accepted by, by all members and any conflict may result in a decent retreat in the Euro. Now, as for the rest of today's events, uh, apart from the Bank of England, we have two more central banks deciding on monetary policy today the SNB and the Norges Bank. Kicking off with the SNB, no policy changes are expected. The last meeting of this bank was back in uh, March 19th, with officials refraining from touching the already low interest rate of minus 0.75%. However, they strengthened uh, their intervention language in light of the fast uh, spreading of the coronavirus, noting that they will intervene more strongly in the FX market. They also added that the franc was even more highly valued. Now, with governments around the globe easing their lockdown measures and, and economic data suggesting that the deep economic wounds from the coronavirus may be behind us, we don't expect uh, this bank to proceed with any policy changes. After all, they haven't done uh, so in March when every other central bank was expanding its stimulus efforts to fight the economic fallout from the coronavirus. That said, bearing in mind that uh, now the franc is stronger than it was when officials uh, last met, we believe that they will stay ready to intervene in the FX market if things fall out of orbit. Passing the ball to the Norges Bank, we don't expect any changes from this bank either. At its uh, latest meeting, the Norges Bank cut its uh, benchmark policy rate to 0%, with officials saying that it will most likely stay at that level for some time ahead. We do not envisage making further policy rate cuts, Governor Olsen said at the, in the accompanying statement. Last week, data showed that both uh, headline and core inflation accelerated more than anticipated, something that allows policymakers to sit more comfortably on the sidelines, in our view. With regards to the data, the US initial jobless claims for last week are coming out, as well as the Philadelphia Fed uh, Manufacturing Index for June. Jobless claims are forecast to have slowed even further to 1.3 million from 1.54 million the week before, while the Philly, the Philly index is uh, expected to have risen to minus 23% from minus 43.1. As uh, for tonight, during the Asian morning Friday, we get Japan's national CPIs for May, while uh, during the early European morning, the UK retail sales for the month are coming out. With regards to the Japanese numbers, the core CPI rate is expected to have ticked up to, to minus 0.1% year over year from minus 0.2%, while no forecast is available for the headline rate. The UK retail sales are expected to have rebounded 5.7% month over month after tumbling 18.1% in April, with the core rate expected to have risen to 4.5% to month over month from minus 15.2%. Now, as for the speakers, uh, apart from uh, SNB President Thomas Jordan, who will hold a press conference after his bank's uh, decision, we will also get to hear from Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester and Bank of Canada Governing Council member uh, Lawrence uh, Skebri. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning uh, about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT. 
just fair and direct. 